Hello everyone, I'm Joe from eCommerce Platforms and this is our guide on how to start your very own online boutique. Um, today we're going to be talking about really what goes into an online boutique and why it's be becoming so popular and it really has been always very popular for people to get into the clothing industry. Um, mainly because the markups are so big in the clothing industry um, and obviously people need to wear clothes so there's going to be new styles, uh, new things coming out every single year um, that allow you to kind of have some fresh inventory and to kind of figure out exactly how much money you want to make in terms of profit um, because there are plenty of other industries where you know you're only going to be making five to fifteen percent of a profit margin um, but with clothing and if you do start your own online boutique it allows you to kind of get a little bit more creative with your pricing methods um, as well as uh, you kind of have this intrinsic value with your products where you can create something completely unique and slap your own price on it so um, once again it it creates kind of this situation where you get to be creative one and you get to sell to people uh, completely unique products that might not be found anywhere else. So if you take a look here, this is actually a theme from Shopify. It's one of their boutique themes. It looks pretty nice. You know, they have that header image. Um, it says, welcome to our new boutique. Um, and then of course, uh, lots of imagery. So that's a big part of creating your own online boutique. And uh, some other benefits of having your own online store for clothing is that, uh, like we said, fashion constantly changes over time. Um, so it allows for you to have a large collection of products. Not only that, but you can sell items for both men and women. You can sell items for children. Um, there's all sorts of options, um, especially when it comes to finding your suppliers because um, there are so many companies that create clothing uh, so you have once again plenty of options now very briefly I wanted to talk about the legal essentials for an online fashion boutique um, since it's clothing there's no necessity to obtain a special license to launch your online boutique therefore you'll just need to look into the small business laws in your area and your state and figure out the type of licensing that's required in your area um, so this is great and it comes in handy for tax purposes and for avoiding any problems that you might have with your own government. Um, but in general, you want to form a business in your state or region. Um, so the only other thing to worry about is whether you're going to be storing your own merchandise or not. Um, so I'll discuss the benefits and downsides of doing so in the section below. But most businesses that hold on to large amounts of inventory will have to double check the local lease or zoning codes. So make sure you do that, um, especially if you're going to have loads of inventory that you're going to be keeping track of. Uh, for example, they probably won't care if you have only a few pairs of clothes crammed into your basement. And that's how a lot of people get started. Uh, but it gets messy when that number turns into thousands and thousands of items and you're trying to make it work in a small apartment. Um, so you do need to kind of figure out those local zoning codes because they might not like it that you're running this gigantic business in your small two bedroom apartment. Um, but you never know when the things take a turn for the worse. So when, so make sure that you don't overlook these two important points. All right, so now let's get down to the business of locating the right suppliers. This is going to be step one. Um, and there are several options to walk through when you're looking for your suppliers. So first of all, you want to think about a niche. And we kind of talked about that before. Like for this website right here, it's clearly based on female uh, buyers, uh, maybe a little bit younger, trendy, uh, maybe young professionals, something like that. Um, but the first order of business, obviously, is to decide on this niche. Um, so it may sound like a good idea to take an approach similar to that of a large fashion company um, by selling everything from men's clothing to jewelry and pants and shirts and selling to both men and women. Um, but the most successful brands usually start with something much smaller. Um, and there are plenty of examples of this online. Um, but, you know, the big brands, they, they usually hone in on one niche, which is usually a lot easier to manage from the beginning. 
Um, so by smaller, I mean concentrated niches. For example, you may cater to women who are interested in a high fashion look from the 1970s. You know, that's really unique. Um, so these items are going to be much harder for the average consumer to find. And there's no telling exactly what type of price tag is going to be on these products because um, they're not being sold by regular uh, department stores or online stores. Um, so after all, there's no benchmark for people to compare. So once you have figured out that niche, it becomes a lot easier. You're kind of ahead of the curve, um, so to speak. Um, and then you get to decide, you know, would you like to go wholesale or would you like to do something different, such as um, consider drop shipping for your fashion boutique? So now's the time we're going to actually start taking a look at some of these uh, areas online. And I can jump off the screen here. Um, so basically, the first option is going to be going wholesale or storing your own items route. Um, so this is the more traditional route to take, where you contact one or two suppliers and you agree to buy a certain amount of inventory, then store that inventory in your basement, storage facility, or garage, you know, whatever it is you have. So there are plenty of different options to approach this route. Um, back in the day, you would have just started calling up suppliers, maybe in the phone book, and seeing if they would give you some sort of deal for a wholesale purchase. Um, and that's great. But nowadays, you can look online. There are plenty of online directories for looking uh, for those wholesale suppliers. In addition, you might be able to find some interesting apps or integrations with your current e-commerce platform. For example, Shopify has their app store, and they have a whole collection of wholesale apps. Um, so like Fox Drive Wholesale, that's an option that uh, automatically connects you with suppliers and offers wholesale pricing to uh, the merchants. Um, Wholesale Hero is pretty similar, um, but there's a bunch of them. You know, they all have pretty good reviews. Uh, for example, uh, let's look at wholesale pricing. Um, so this option would actually be helpful for suppliers. Um, I was a little mistaken before, but uh, so it'll allow you to create your own wholesale store. Um, so that's an option. Uh, the Wholesaler app is an interesting option for you as well, uh, where you can sell retail and wholesale sale items in the exact same store. So this might be useful if you were to contact your wholesale um, suppliers, and then you can also sell a little bit of both. Um, but overall, wholesale suppliers are more common than drop shippers, which is one of the other options uh, you can do to find your suppliers. And we'll cover that later. So you should be able to easily spot them by completing a quick Google search. Um, here's an example of a query uh, that's easy to remember. Uh, you would go to Google and type in insert niche here, you know, and then so you would type in uh, clothing or women's clothing, and then you would type in a wholesaler. So as an example, I've gone to Google and you can see women's clothing wholesale made in the US. You know, maybe that's a good option for you. And that will bring up all sorts of results by Made in uh, USA Apparel for Women's Online. Um, and this is a wholesale clothing directory. Um, so that might be decent. This looks like it might be more of a marketplace or one company. Um, the wholesale clothing directory. Uh, you know, this is actually a pretty popular one where you can just search through all of these vetted suppliers and it really just lets you, you know, for example, if you wanted to open a store for wholesale or for socks, um, you could go to Alabama Wholesale Socks and you could either contact the company, see if they would partner with you or maybe see if they provide online tools for your store. Um, so, you know, like I said, wholesale is definitely an option. Um, it's the oldest tool in the book in terms of supply, um, but you can also browse more renowned websites like Alibaba and contact some of the more reputable, reputable suppliers who would be willing to send you batches of goods at cheaper rates. All right, so next I wanna talk about the benefits of wholesale and the downsides of wholesale because there's a bunch of them on each side. Uh, for the benefits, you know, clothing is often easy to store and can be packaged in a way that it doesn't take up too much space. Uh, so that's obviously an advantage for you. Uh, you also have the opportunity to control shipping 
and the packaging that the clothing goes into. So you have a lot more control in terms of your entire operation. Um, and this is crucial for branding purposes. You know, when Amazon sends out a package, you recognize it immediately once it comes to your, to your doorstep. Um, so that could remind other people or that person who bought the product to keep uh, buying from your store. And you also have more control over the quality of your products since you can look at the items before sending them out and you don't have to just kind of guess or hope that your suppliers are sending out good products in quality packaging. Um, in terms of the downsides of wholesale, you have to put in a lot more effort for shipping and packaging. Um, so, and then you also, also you save money by buying in bulk uh, although you save money by buying in bulk, it appears to be cost costly in the short term since you have to purchase many items. Um, so, I mean, that's kind of the primary downside is that you might have to purchase a hundred to a thousand items, which could be pretty detrimental to uh, your cash flow, at least starting off. You know, it's a lot of capital to get started with a wholesale uh, store. And finally, wholesale has a lot a lot of overhead because of storage, shipping, and packaging. And that kind of goes along with the effort part of it, but you're gonna be putting money and effort, you know, lots of time into doing your own storage, shipping, and packaging. Um, so often it's a lot easier to partner up with a supplier who might drop ship or someone who might store your products for you, um, but it all depends. Um, so those are kind of like the benefits and downsides of wholesale. And now we're going to walk into drop shipping for your fashion boutique. Um, drop shipping in the past has usually been slightly more difficult to set up for your online boutique. Uh, this is mainly because of the fact that not all clothing suppliers drop ship. However, you can contact them and see how it goes. You know, drop shipping is a far more common practice nowadays. Um, in addition, there are options like AliExpress. Uh, which is a great place to start since you can search based on the type of clothing and suppliers. We also really like the Oberlo app, um, which can be integrated into Shopify. And basically what it does is it connects you to AliExpress and several other suppliers so that basically uh, you can import your products, you can make a sale, and then the order is placed and the supplier ships the product. So with drop shipping, all you're doing is setting up a website and you're marketing it, um, which is great because you don't have to store the products. You don't have to create the packaging or ship it out. It's all done for you. Um, there are plenty of downsides to this, but it is a very popular option, especially if you already have an established store and you'd like to maybe test out some products or see if you can find some great niche in the fashion industry and start selling. So there are obviously lots of benefits to drop shipping. One of them is that there's no need to pay for or worry about storage. This keeps your initial cost down very low. So lots of people are very intrigued by drop shipping uh, because there's not things like shipping and packaging are all taken care of. You don't have to start off with a lot of capital to get your store running. Um, and you also end up spending far less money um, when starting off, like we've said, um, so if you're a small store or even if you're an established store and you just want to test out some products without uh, spending too much money, it can be quite beneficial. However, there are some downsides. Uh, you might have problems with customer service since the packages aren't being sent back to you and you have less control over the entire process. So you might be getting pa some packages back depending on the supplier, um, but a lot of times they get sent right back to the supplier and you have no, no control over the return process. Um, the products also can't be individually inspected before sending out. Um, this is a huge problem for quality control. Um, so the best idea is to partner with a supplier that gives you some samples before you post it on your store. Um, and then it also may take a very long time for your customers to receive their products. And this is, in my opinion, the worst part of drop shipping. Um, a lot of these uh, apps and providers like Oberlo are getting much better with this by partnering 
with more local companies. Like I know Oberlo actually offers plenty of uh, U.S. companies nowadays, but still it's hard to compete with a company like Amazon. So you really have to make sure that you can try to cut down the shipping window to say less than a week. And then you also want to make sure that your your items are completely unique to only your store. Uh, and that's where finding your niche comes in handy. Okay, so the third step in creating your own online boutique is going to be vetting your suppliers. Um, so regardless of whether you choose to wholesale or drop ship, uh, you're going to have to vet them and figure out if these suppliers are any good. Um, so this is an example. I'm not uh, always a huge fan of AliExpress. It's great uh, for some businesses, um, but I, I'm currently located in the U.S., so if I were to run a business um, or, or a drop shipping business, I would partner with an online supplier so I could get the product shipped to my customers as quickly as possible. However, for the sake of this and considering AliExpress is so popular, uh, especially when you hook it up to a service like Oberlo, um, what you can do here, you know, let's say we wanted to search for women's clothing and we might do dresses and see that we really like this dress right here. And that's all fine and dandy. But the next step is to figure out, you know, where is the actual supplier? Um, so we can go down here, a uh, fashion memory store, it looks like is going to be the supplier. And then it will give you kind of a storefront so you can see what they're selling. Um, but you also want to see what the feedback is and if you can potentially contact them. So up here, you know, we can see 96.3% positive feedback. That's pretty good. Um, but we also would like to, uh, you know, scroll around and see, you know, the types of products that they're selling. Um, but also if we can contact them. So if we do, uh, let's see. I think we just have to click on the positive feedback area. Yeah, so if we click on positive feedback, it should give us an area that says, you know, this store has been open since March 21st, 2017. Uh, looks like there are some ratings that you can click on and see. You can follow them and you can also contact now. So if you want to send them a direct message, you know, that's an awesome option through AliExpress. Um, if you're looking for more of a local store like in the U.S. or just down the street, uh, then, you know, you might just look up their website and call them yourself. So there will always be someone to get a hold, with, to get a hold of. Um, and you want to ask plenty of questions. Is the quality of the clothing up to your boutique standards? Um, let's go back here. So, you know, you want to kind of walk through what they're selling right now. Um, are you going to have a point person to speak with every week or month uh, you know, this is essential for managing a long-lasting relationship. Then, of course, does the supplier has, have a history of success? Is it compliant, financially healthy, and reputable in the industry? You might have to dig a little bit deeper online or maybe even talk to other people who have worked, other companies who have worked with the supplier. Um, so these are some of the questions that can be answered by, you know, completing your online research. Um, but most of the time, you can go through the steps well, on the phone with your point person. And obviously, you know, if that person is not picking up the phone or never responding to you, that's probably a good indicator that they're not exactly the best person you want to be working with. Okay, so now we want to design the best possible online store we can. Um, and in order to do this, we're going to work through Shopify. It's really easy to do. Um, it's one of the best e-commerce platforms out there. Um, and the main reason is because they have plenty of themes that focus on this industry, you know, fashion and boutiques. Um, so if you're just getting started, what you can do is go to your online store and you can actually change out the theme that you have. So if you wanted to uh, say explore free themes, that's an option. And you know, there are plenty of options on here. That looks like it might be for a, um, a men's boutique of some sort. Uh, that looks like it might be for a women's boutique. So there are plenty of options that you can choose from and you would simply select that and install it on your page. And if you really want to find out what would work, what type of theme would work for your store, uh, you would go to the Shopify theme store and you can look at collections. So you know they might have something in here 
if you're looking for a small inventory or minimalist style. Uh, but the industry would probably make the most sense. So you can choose clothing and fashion. And then just kind of scroll through here. There are plenty of free options. There's paid ones that are around, well, these are 180. There's like 160 there. Um, but yeah, so then you would select, let's say artisan. And this looks pretty nice. You can change around the styles if you want. Um, but Victoria here looks more like something for a boutique. And then you can test it out and even try the theme on your own website. Um, so this looks pretty nice. And it, and it has all of the elements you need on here. You might, as you can see, there's a pop-up that you can install. Um, but yeah, you would highlight all of the products in your store, have plenty of images, and it's all set there for you. The only thing that you have to do after that is jump back to your online store, if we can here, and then add your own products. So, you know, this is a test store, but it still go, it falls in the realm of boutique where I have shoes and you would be able to create your own products, upload images, type in titles. It's just taking a minute here. Yeah, so I have my title here. You create a description, images, pricing, all that good stuff. So, you know, there's plenty and plenty of uh, fields here that you would fill in. Um, but ideally, what you would want to do is integrate with a drop shipping app. Now, if it were wholesale, you would simply just create the products yourself. Um, but for a, a drop shipping app, you would be able to go to the App Store. And then it looks like I already have Oberlo installed. And if you don't already, then you can go to the App Store and click on the Get button. And that basically just integrates it with your Shopify store connecting you with all the suppliers that Oberlo currently has. And this is pretty awesome because you don't have to leave your Shopify uh, dashboard. It kind of has a different dashboard for Oberlo. Um, but let's say I wanted to go to women's clothing and accessories. Um, then we can scroll down. You know, they got all sorts of things in here. Um, but let's say I wanted to do this, uh, looks like some sort of jacket. And I wanted to view the information about it. Uh, we're going to have it opened in a new tab, so we'll just have to jump over really quick. And this gives you all the information on the AliExpress store. Um, so this is pretty cool. Um, and basically what you would do is just add it to your store. If we So basically all you would have to do is add this uh, to the import list, which is pretty nice. And once that adds it to the import list, you can scroll up here. Um, it looks like the import list is right up here and click on that and then uh, it will show all of the products that you have pulled from AliExpress uh, into your Shopify store. Uh, so this is pretty nice really because uh, it has all the product details which you're probably going to want to change um, but you can you know this is the really specific information that you can cut down or add your own keywords for SEO purposes. You know they have the descriptions the variants, the images, and then once you do that, all you have to do is click on the import to store button, and then it will let you know once it's actually in the store. And looks like we can edit the product on Shopify. And then that product will automatically be added to Shopify. So you can edit anything you want. Uh, so it's really pretty great. Um, and once you have all the products you want and the, the design, uh, you should be ready to go. Um, and step five in the whole process is going to be st starting an online boutique and beginning that mass marketing push. Um, so these are just kind of tips that I have for you. If you plan on uh, running an online boutique, uh, to start, I would recommend creating an Instagram and Facebook account to share pictures of models or regular people wearing your merchandise. Um, this is a great way to kind of get the word out there and show how the products are looking on actual people. And you also want to temporarily pause ads when your social media po posts perform well. That way um, you can actually evaluate what's going on and figure out, you know, how can we improve it or, you know, is this something that we would like to really promote 
because it's doing well. And you also want to capture visually attractive photos of your clothing, both on and off models. This is going to be going to be one of your best options uh, for selling your products and kind of standing out compared to all the other drop shipping stores out there. In addition, think about channels like eBay, Amazon, and Etsy. You know, those are great marketplaces for selling. And then you also want to launch an email list to send out coupons and rewards. Finally, try to reach out to influencers like bloggers and famous people who might be willing to wear your clothing. There are plenty of people on uh, Instagram, mainly women, but there's lots of men as well, uh, who would be willing to wear your products for maybe a small fee or for some sort of trade-off. Um, so those are some options when it comes to marketing. Other than that, those are the tools and steps you need to create your own online boutique. Thank you for watching.